Okay, so we've done a lot to play with duotone coloring, whether it's subtle or whether it's strong, whether it's hard edged, whether it's soft edged, it adds dimension to that flat color. So at this stage, I wanna organize my layers a little bit and show you how I can make kind of some simple decisions. So first off, here's my flat color, just my basic flat color. So I wanna move that down to the bottom, right on top of my base. And this is gonna be true of a lot of our projects from now on. We end up building lots of layers to solve particular issues. And it's always good to kind of add layers rather than to, to modify something you might wanna go back on. So let's just look at how we've set this up. We have the white bread on the bottom and then the, the dark bread on the top. So the line art at the top And if you just have the line art, you see the checkerboard grid showing that it's empty behind it. It's like stained glass. We're now filling be behind the leading. And then on the bottom, we have blank white, which we don't mess with. Then I replace and put on top of that blank white a slab of kind of gray, just so we can see all the color choices on top. And then I put a base coat down, which just fills in everything that, that will be colored with white. And that's the layer because it's just a solid cutout of white. It's like the primer before you paint. That's where you can add things like a stroke and a drop shadow. So then we put in our flat color. That's a good start. And then all these other layers are just different combinations to give us our duotone color. And instead of having to go between all these different layers to play with it, I'm going to now merge them. So I select all those that deal with duotone and I hit Command E. And it puts them all onto this one layer. Right, so flat color, then duotone. By putting it all on one layer, it allows me to play with the levels overall. And maybe I want to deepen the shadows a little bit, brighten the highlights. You know, basically just push the contrast a little bit if I think it's a little too subtle. Yeah, and I think I, I like that. Maybe I'll take the opacity down just a little bit. Or better yet. This is why it takes me so long to do digital coloring. I love playing with all the options. So go before I played with those levels, right? Make a duplicate. And then on the duplicate of my duotone merge, play with the levels. And actually one way to do it is just to do auto tone. And that did some weird, weird stuff. Zombie chicken, I might have to play with that later for full spectrum. I'm gonna mark that as blue and go later. Okay, make another duplicate and then just play with the levels in the normal way. What auto tone will try to do is even out the histograms so that everything's represented evenly. And because there's no blue in this at all, it kind of pushed my creamy white towards green and blue. But anyway, I'm going to darken my, um, my mid-tones there and brighten my highlights a little bit. And now I feel like I can exaggerate it a little bit more because I have it as a duplicate that I can then use opacity to fade into what I had before. So yeah, maybe something like that. And then I can fade that in to get just the right duotone. Now here's a little trick for digital illustration. If you don't want that super flat, clean look, you can use the blending mode and you can do this in Photo P or in Photoshop. Instead of normal, you can use dissolve. 
and dissolve will break it into this kind of sand texture. So as you take its opacity down, it starts making it look kind of like um, construction paper. It gives a little bit more texture to the coloring, which is quite nice. So I'll use that in order to get the duotone I like. All right. And then I can also play with it just by playing with the color balance. And I can just shift the duotone just a little bit towards, this is gonna be really subtle, but towards a different tone, right? You see, it's like there's a lot of yellow going on. So I can downplay that a little bit with just my duotone. And it gives it a little bit more complexity, a little bit more visual interest. So really subtle, but I'm liking that more. You can even just select one color at a time. You can take your tolerance down really narrowly. And I can select just that tone of duotone. And I can darken it. There we go. In certain spots more than other spots. I do that on a duplicate layer, right? And then I can use my eraser and erase away from it with the soft edge. So this is more like soft edge duotone. There's an illustration trick, an old saying, which is that you darken towards the V. So as you're going towards kind of a V in your illustration, you always darken there and it helps pop things out. In the feathers of this wing, there are a lot of Vs you know, that can be darkened towards the edges, the corners. So I'm erasing at 60% here. And when I'm doing digital coloring, a lot of it's exploratory, kind of getting a feeling for it, seeing what works. All right. Yeah, so I think that adds. So I can merge all of those together now, maybe up this a little. And now I have all my duotone in one place, right? Which adds quite a bit, both soft edge, mostly soft edged actually, that I ended up with. So I'm going to label it. Duotone soft edge. All right, good time to save it. So this might be my finished project. And I would simply save it by turning off the background and saving it as a PNG, right? And uploading it with the offset. But let's go to some of the, the extra things we can do. If I want this blood to really kind of sing as it's coming off of the head, that black outline doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And same thing with the, the puddle of blood, which is also kind of the shadow underneath. What if I don't want the black outline there? So how can I color on top of the black? Well, this is like olives on top of the sandwich. This is what's called a color hold. 
And if we look at our slides, we'll see the reason I use Wonder Woman as my example is Wonder Woman was one of the earliest characters in comics to use color holds. And they used it on her golden lasso. Because just like the blood coming from the chicken's head, it doesn't make sense for there to be a bold black outline around a lasso that is glowing yellow. So here's a really clear example of a color hold being used. So the black line that draws the lasso got changed, it got replaced with that bright orange, that soft edged orange. And that is called a color hold because it goes on top of the black line. The printer actually has to hold out the ink from the black uh, film work for that color to come through. The other kind of uh, special effect coloring is what's called full spectrum color. And you see how you have green and orange on the skin tones there. Full spectrum color really plays like cool shadows against warm highlights. Now, the more full spectrum color you have, the thinner the, the line art usually is because it can get redundant to have something modeled in the line art and then also in the, in the coloring. So because I have very heavy kind of even line art here, full spectrum color doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm gonna show you how it might be interesting. And I'm gonna use this weird, you know, auto tone coloring as an example. So I'm gonna take this layer and then I'm going to start erasing away from it. And I'm gonna use actually a hard edge eraser. And so now you get the weird kind of blues and grays and pinks. Mixed with. The yellows and the browns from underneath. I'm only erasing at 60% so I can hit it more. If I want the yellow of the legs to come out stronger, I can just hit it again. So that's an example of full spectrum color. Now I can texturize it. I can change it to dissolve. Right? And then you'll see, especially when we get up close, how those different colors kind of mingle together. And I have pretty full control now of all my layers. So if there's anything I want to edit, I certainly can. But this isn't a logo design. You don't have to be super, super detailed about everything. I think I like that. I can go to um, adjustments and hue saturation and just use the hue slider to push that color, that full spectrum color in different directions to see, All right? So I can push it towards the, the magentas or towards the cyans or the purples. I can also deaden it a little bit, which is probably good. Darken it, which looks muddy or brighten it. So many options. And ultimately you decide if it's better with it or without it. I'm gonna put it about there. I might hit it with um, a dodge tool. So this is introducing full spectrum color. This is just going to brighten up the midtones a little bit. Bigger brush. And then